Okay, let's go ahead and practice how to subtract fractions one step at a time. Matter of fact, there's three different ways we could uh, do this particular problem. I'll show you all three in just one second. But uh, if you can solve this problem, if you can subtract these fractions, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to show you these three unique ways. And there's one particular way that is one of my favorite things in math. I'll show you all that in uh, just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I have been teaching math for decades, and uh, it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need math help, uh, check out my math learning program at tcmathacademy.com. You'll find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here. We have 7 tenths minus 1 fourth. What is the correct answer? Well, let's go ahead and see it right now. And here it is. It is 9 twentieths, 9 over 20. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that is super impressive. Matter of fact, you definitely earned a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you could tell your friends and family that indeed you are an expert in subtracting fractions. Great job. Now, if you didn't get this uh, answer, don't get, uh, you know, don't fall into despair. I'm going to show you three awesome ways. And uh, if you used a calculator and got a decimal uh, for this, that's fine. But you want to be able to uh, subtract and, of course, add fractions um, without the aid of a calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So let's talk about the first way. So probably most of you out there um, I took the approach where you recognize you're going to need the lowest common denominator. So why is that? Well, let me go ahead and explain. So anytime we're trying to add or subtract fractions, we need these bottom numbers the same. But let me even back up a step further. So what is the top number in a fraction? Well, that's called the numerator, and the bottom number is called the denominator, right? So the bottom number of a fraction is a denominator. The top number is called the numerator. All right, so in order to add or subtract fractions, and of course we're talking about subtraction here, these denominators must be the same. So we have a situation here, right? We have 10 and 4. Clearly they're not the same, so we need to find some denominators, or a denominator, that is in common with these numbers right here, okay? And that is called the lowest common denominator. So let me have a, uh, well, let me ask you a question. What is the LCD? What is the lowest common denominator? So if you know the answer, put that into the comment section. But here is a great question for you. Most of you can probably figure this out without too much difficulty because these numbers are pretty easy. But how do you find the LCD? Okay. So a lot of people or a lot of students are like, oh, I just know it's this. Well, I'm going to show you exactly how to find the LCD. Now, if you said the lowest common denominator is, in fact, 20, that is awesome. Matter of fact, we'll give you a nice little happy face for uh, just answering that question because a lot of students struggle with it. Uh, by the way, if you need help with uh, basic mathematics, arithmetic, uh, fractions, that type of thing, uh, in the description, I have two courses I'm going to suggest. My Math Foundations course for like a quick basic math review. Um, or my pre-algebra course. Both of those courses, I uh, um, have complete full instruction on fractions. Okay, so let's talk real quick about how to find the LCD. So what you want to do is we want to take these numbers. Okay, these are our denominators, 10 and 4. Okay, and you want to prime factor them. All right, so in other words, we're going to break this up using a factor tree and think about what numbers can we multiply together and these are called factors, such that these numbers, when we multiply it, we get back to this number. So this is factors of 10, 2, and 5, but they're also prime factors. In other words, we want to keep going until we run into prime numbers. So 10 is equal to 2 times 5. These are the prime factors of 10. So what you want to do is uh, prime factor each of the denominators. Now, you may have more than just two denominators. So, uh, of course, whatever amount of denominators you have, just uh, prime factor. Okay, how about 4? Well, 4 is clearly going to be 2 times 2. These are prime numbers. 
So four is gonna be equal to two times two, but here is the deal. Anytime you have repeating factors like two and two, write them as a power. Okay, so two times two is the same thing as two squared. All right, so here is how you can construct and find the LCD. Once you have um, all the prime factors of your numbers, this is super easy. All you need to do is have each one of these prime factors represented in your lowest common denominator. So in other words, we're gonna pull uh, in every single unique, uh, unique prime factor. So we have a two here, a five here, and a two squared here. Okay, so we have a two and a two squared. So this two is really two to the first right here. So anytime you have the same uh, number, but to a different power. So in other words, if we had two to the first, two squared and two cubed as part of our prime factors, you're always uh, going to select the highest power of that factor. So we don't need the two to the first, we need the two to the second power. This is the one we need represented and our LCD. So we're gonna put a two to the second power, okay? And then of course we have a five, we need that represented, we'll put that in. So we have two squared times five, which is what? Well, two, square, two squared is four times five, which of course is 20. Now, a lot of you might be saying, yes, I knew that Mr. YouTube math man. You know, this is a whole, you know, you're like explaining something I already know. Well, I bet most of you out there really didn't um, really don't truly understand the process. Now here, this is pretty easy, but what if I made this problem seven over 108 minus uh, 462? Okay, well, now to find the LCD there, a lot of you wouldn't have happy faces. You might be like this, and I forget this video. I'm not doing this. I'll just use my calculator, right? Well, listen, uh, you're, gonna be able, you're gonna have to be able to do problems like that as well. So that's why it's important to understand the procedure to find the LCD. Okay, so uh, here it is, 20, that is our lowest common denominator. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we need to rewrite each of these fractions such that the denominator becomes 20. So instead of a 10 here, we need a 20. Instead of a four here, we need a 20. Okay, so how do we turn a 10 into a 20? Easy, we just multiply it by two. But if we multiply the denominator by two, we need to multiply the numerator by two. So this is going to be uh, 20 over two times seven is 14. So all we're doing is rewriting this fraction into this fraction, okay? 14 over 20 is the same, it's equivalent to seven over 10. Matter of fact, if you had this fraction, I said uh, reduce this fraction, you would just get back to here, okay? So you're not breaking the problem, uh, you're just rewriting it such that you have the denominator that you want. All right, so here we have one fourth, right? So what do we need to do? Well, we need to multiply that four by five to get a 20, meaning that we need to multiply the numerator by five as well. Okay, so that's going to become five over 20. So both of these fractions now, we kind of rewrote uh, such that they have a common denominator of 20. All right, so now this is going to become nice and easy. So how do we subtract fractions when we have the same denominator? Easy, we just write that denominator and we actually just subtract the numerator. So this is gonna be 14 minus five. Of course, 14 minus five is nine over 20 and here we're looking to see if we can reduce but uh, there are no common factors so there is your final answer 9 over 20. okay now if you totally understood this and just kind of um you know said yep this is the way i did it great job and by the way you're going to want to understand all these methods uh, most students would take the lcd path uh, so that's great if you did it this way but let me show you one of my favorite things in math. It's one of the coolest shortcuts there is. I call it the bow tie method because it reminds me of a bow tie, right? So here's my little stick figure right here. And a bow tie is one of these little gizmos right there, right? Now, some of you might be saying, I bet you wear a bow tie. No, I don't wear a bow tie, but I do think they are pretty cool. But I say it's the bow tie method because I want you to remember that pattern. Okay, so let's subtract these fractions using the bow tie method. And uh, this is an awesome method. And what you're gonna be doing is following this very, very specific pattern, okay? So we have seven uh, over 10 minus one over four. So here you go. So you're gonna start from the bottom right, four, and you're gonna go in this direction, okay? You can see the blue arrow here. So seven, I'm sorry, four times seven, you're gonna write that answer up in the numerator. So four times seven is what? 28. 
Now, because this, uh, this is a subtraction problem, we're going to put a subtraction right there. What we're doing is forming this little uh, cross product right here is uh, going to form the numerator of the answer. So 4 times 7. You always start in this direction, not in this direction. So 4 times 7, 28, minus okay, 10 times 1, which, of course, is 10. All right, so that is the numerator. Now, to get the denominator, you're just going to multiply across. So 10 times 4 is 40. All right, so let's go ahead and clean this up. So we have 28 minus 10 is 18 over 40. Now, what's awesome about this is we didn't have to think about the LCD. We didn't do anything. We just started just doing stuff, right? Boom, 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 boom. So we got 18 over 40, but we're not done. Uh, what we need to do is to see if we can reduce this fraction, of course, 2 goes in 18, 9, and 2 goes into 40, 20. So there is our answer. Okay, now the only um, drawback on the bow tie method is uh, sometimes you will need to reduce your answer, but that's no big deal. But the main benefit here is that if you follow these steps, you absolutely will get the right answer every single time, and you don't have to deal with the LCD, which is awesome. And there's other benefits as well, especially when you are working uh, with algebra. Okay, so that is the second method. So what's the third way you can do this? Well, you can use decimals, okay? Now, if you have your calculator handy, uh, you could just uh, take 7 divided by 10, or you could see that this is 7 tenths, right, or 0.7. And then 1 fourth here is the same thing as the decimal 0.25, okay? All right, so, of course, you could use your calculator, or if you know how to subtract uh, decimals, you can do this as well. So 0 0.7 minus 0.25, we're just going to go ahead and do this math, is 0.45. So this is uh, a good answer, but let's suppose you wanted to express this as a fraction. Well, 0.45 is the same thing as 45 hundredths, okay? So this is all this kind of place value stuff you need to uh, remember. 4 is in a tenths place, 5 is in a hundredths place, so we can express... Uh, this decimal, 0.45, as 45 over 100. And 45 over 100, we can reduce. 5 goes into 45 9 times, and 5 goes into 100 20 times. And there you go. There is our answer. Again, 9 over 20. Okay, so as I promised, there are three different ways you can approach this problem. But, you know, uh, it's good to know always, all right? There's, you know, the main thing is, you know, even though I show you these little shortcuts... You still need to know how to find the lowest common denominator. That is critical, okay? So if you struggle with fractions, no big deal. Don't panic. A lot of students do, and uh, you could turn it around without too much difficulty. What you need is clear and understandable instructions. So if you really need help with basic math, like decimals and stuff, check out my Math Foundations course. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel as well. But uh, if this particular video helped you out, don't forget to like, and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.